There's a YouTube channel. It goes by the name of Mr. Snowflake. Yeah, he's keeping the misfits alive with those, that's for sure, for eternity. Yeah. There are few relationships closer than that of coach and student, a master and an apprentice. However, in Adam and Jason's situation, that was not quite the case, because as Jason explains to Andrew, their working relationship was now over. What is going on? Uh, Adam, uh, didn't drop me or dump me or be mean to me or anything or do anything like that. All right. He just simply had to part ways because he's got, he's busy with his, busy with his business. His wife is on his case. He's got a lot of shit going on. He, he is busy and doing so shit. So Adam's moving in a different direction. Yeah. Now the partnership between Andrew and Jason had seemed pretty strained for a while now and it had only seemed to be getting worse and worse with every Misfit or Jason Genova video that was posted online. So when it was announced that the two had officially split, no one was really that surprised. There have been shocking splits in the past, Princess Diana and Prince Charles, Brad and Jen, this kid and his ball sack, But Adam and Jason parting ways always seemed a question of when, not if. Jason clearly hadn't been enjoying the boot camp style of training, Fuck! and Adam hadn't been enjoying having to watch Jason like a hawk to make sure he didn't cheat on his diet. But at least I was honest. God, no, you weren't honest, Jason. I went on the freaking um, you, um the, the video and said I just talked to him, confirmed it was protein. It yeah. was protein. I'm not lying. It was protein. It was protein. Uh, oh, is it a new cream flavor? Cream of man? No, it was protein. I'm gonna be honest. I'm just fucking with you. It was protein. All right, I'll tell you what I drank. I'll tell you what I ate that day, okay? The only surprising thing about Adam quitting as Jason's coach was that he waited this long to do it. I'm amazed he lasted as long as he did. I didn't think he would be in the game with you for this long, to be honest. No. He, uh, he's got some stamina, I'll tell you that. Adam claimed it was because his wife wasn't happy with him spending so much time away. And this could well have been the case, but Adam seemed at the end of his rope with Jason anyway. And Adam may not have achieved his goal of getting Jason in good enough shape to win a bodybuilding contest, after all, this is what Jason had wanted for years now, but he had managed to get Jason in the best shape of his life, getting Jason down to around 180 pounds and 14% body fat, depending on what measurements you believe. And that was measured when, yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. 10.9%. Almost 11. When Jason is discussing the split, he doesn't seem too upset by it. In fact, he almost seems a little relieved. Maybe that's because now he could go back to bodybuilding style training more 
Or maybe it's because he can now start taking his special supplements again. Come on, you're on film now. Come on, I'm on Skittles! <laughs> Jason, what is your secret for putting on seven and a half pounds of muscles a week? One week. One week. One, one week. One of the, one of the pounds Sickening what? Skittles! <laughs> it's Skittles! It's Skittles! Skittle time, bitches! Oh my god. Or maybe it's because without having someone standing over him watching, he can now eat whatever he wants. So what went wrong? How come this pairing of trainer and student didn't work out? Adam seemingly tried everything. He tried being harsh on Jason. He tried being gentler and more understanding. He even offered him incentives. You're playing with me about an iPhone? No, I don't it's... think you deserve that for No, God. no, 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 no. And he genuinely seemed upset to be calling it a day. I did, I acted cocky in the beginning, I said I could do it, and I failed, so I know some of you guys that hate me, probably very happy to hear that, they're happy. So, you definitely didn't fail, Jason's never looked this good. Well, I failed on saying that he'd be, um... And you did the best you could without living with him. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's, the, that's what it's going to take to make you a pro, or even a, a, a semi-pro Jason, so you're going to have to have someone there. Perhaps Adam was right. Perhaps it was going to take someone to move into Jason's place to make sure he does the right things. Or maybe that should be to not do the wrong things. And now that Adam was out, that left the door open for a new trainer to take over. <laughs> Rumours quickly began circulating about who was going to be Jason's new trainer. There's a rumor going around now that you're going to be Jason's new uh, coach. No chance. You don't want to move in with him? You couldn't fucking pay me enough. Move in? Sure. Because it's like being in fucking jail. You can live with him for a month. He won't listen to me anyway. He, listen, he listens to fucking... <laughs> See, case in point. So you're not going to become his coach. You will not be willing to do no, this. No way. No? Why? He doesn't need a coach. If you can read, you can coach yourself. There were also rumours that perhaps it could be JT. After all, JT had recently been training Jason a little. But it wasn't going to be Brad or JT. The mammoth task of getting Jason bodybuilder ready fell to that of fitness YouTuber Ian McCarthy. Ian was a fitness expert and exercise scientist. The misfits were discussing Ian's visit to the gym the day before. The video with Ian McCarthy on Saturday and Sunday was pissingly sickening. Met in another internet celebrity like myself. Life, life, life science. <laughs> Some saw a problem with Ian training people to get in great shape when he himself was not in the best of shape. If I looked at, I don't know, Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. And I looked at Ian. Who would I want to train me just by visual, not even knowing him. You know, Ian looks like a scientist, yeah. you know, and he might have a lot of knowledge. that knowledge, but in the bodybuilding world, if you put two guys, Ronnie Coleman and him over there, and he said from a distance, who do you want to train you? Andrew thought it was more about the knowledge Ian had rather than what he looked like. And one of the examples I was using with JT is Lou Duva. Lou Duva trained Evander Holyfield, he trained Lennox Lewis. I think he trained Pernell Whitaker, but I could be wrong. He trained a bunch of champions. Lou Duva was a short, fat troll. Yet, I don't think anybody is going to question his expertise as a boxing trainer. And Brad gave a very Brad response about it all. To a fucking nerd on the internet that thinks, you know, I, I looked up that guy, Ian McCarthy. The kid's a fucking, he's half your size. What does he know? He knows a lot. He knows a lot. He knows a lot. He knows that he probably got the shit kicked out of He probably got his lunch money stolen every day. <laughs> well, That's why he's in the fucking... See? Wait, and you're laughing because you probably I, took his I money. I told... Oh, hold on. I Ian would openly admit that he didn't have the best body in the world. In fact, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that he wasn't far off Jason in terms of physique. Ian would blame his poor genetics and the fact that he was a natural lifter for his poor physique. He was also known to have a poor diet himself, just like Jason. Ian was known for his consumption of Pop-Tarts, and that may not sound like the diet of a fitness YouTuber, but even the great Tom Platts used to eat Pop-Tarts for breakfast, the chocolate ones and he had a world-class physique, although not everybody thought so. But he, his upper body sucked. He had a great legs, great legs, but his upper body was... Yes, T upper body. Tom Platt's an IFBB pro, his upper body sucked, JT. Did you hear that? Oh, hello there. 
Sorry, I didn't see you. I was too busy doing a super heavy workout after being inspired by Tom Platt. Hey, speaking of Tom Platt, why don't you check out the video I made about him? It's sickening! Oh, hey Jimmy, what's up? What do you think you're doing? Oh, I was just telling everyone about the Tom Platt video I- Meant to be a history of video. Don't see Geo Samuel plugging his music stuff in the middle of a Chris Chan video. Sorry, Jimmy. You hooded fucking prick! Before Ian officially became Jason's new Koth, the two had had a run-in before. The problems came when Ian made a video criticising people who insulted Jason. So, Ian did sound like he was white knighting Jason and was a fan of his. But the problem came when Ian said how it was unfair that people would make fun of Jason because he has dyslexia and is probably autistic as well. Jason watched the video of Ian defending him, but rather than pay attention to Ian sticking up for him, all Jason heard was Ian call him autistic. I am not autism. You're wrong. If you met me in person, my producer would tell you I'm not that. I'm dyslexic, OCD, and ADD. That's my disability, right, Andrew? That's me shaking my head, yes. Yes. I'm not fucking autism. Autism people can't drive, they can't hold three jobs like I'm holding, and work, even a... I would do for a moving company. If I was autism, would I be able to lift fucking furniture all around all day? No. Would I be able to hold signs and hand out business cards? No. Things got even worse when a fake Ian McCarthy showed up on Facebook and YouTube taunting Jason, which prompted Genova to threaten to wrap his 18-inch bare arms around Ian's neck. And as we already know, Jason knows how to fight. However, after all of the misunderstanding of the fake Ian was cleared up, Ian and his girlfriend would come to stay at Jason's house and shoot some footage. Ian even declared himself Jason's new coach, and even planned on staying at Jason's house for the whole summer. If someone was going to make sure Jason stuck to a diet, then living with him was probably the best way to do that. However, Ian didn't end up moving into Jason's. Perhaps he realised that getting Jason into bodybuilder shape was truly a Herculean task. Hey. Speaking of Herculean... Never mind. Brad seemed a little suspicious of Ian. In fact, Brad had seemed a little suspicious of anyone who had trained Jason, with the exception of JT. And Brad's suspicions were shared with a lot of maniacs as well. Some felt that whoever came in to train Jason were merely doing it to see what they could gain from training him, how they could make their name or their company bigger, to see just how much publicity they could get out of training Jason. And Brad and the Maniac's suspicions seem to have been confirmed when Ian gave Jason one of his company shirts to wear. So, you see a sickening shirt company? He gave me the shirt. <laughs> Jason just saw it as a new gift, so he was happy. But it meant that Ian was getting his name out there more. However, Andrew seemed to like Ian. It was fun working with Ian. I, uh, I enjoyed spending He's time with him here. He, he actually has a very good sense of humor. He isn't as mechanical and robotic off camera as he appears to be on camera. I found him to be very humble. Just a cool guy. Yeah. yeah. It was fun hanging out with him here in the gym. So perhaps Ian's whole motivation was genuine. Andrew seemed to be a level-headed guy and you knew he would be looking out for Jason's best interest. So if Andrew liked him, then there was a good chance Ian was actually okay. Many maniacs and people who had been involved with Jason before had considered him a lost cause. But Andrew was still in the gym every week, trying to guide Jason through life. Talking shit. Jason, try not to pay too much attention in the comments. If you're going to post a video on YouTube, you have to be prepared to deal with comments, trolls. good and bad. Well, I'm not going to call them trolls. Look, hey, freedom of speech. People have a right to say whatever they want. If you don't like it, don't post the videos. Or at the very least, just try and guide them through a workout. Jason was starting to care less and less about working out and more and more about just being filmed. Please say it 10 more times. Put on your shirt before I throw he, he won't. <laughs> he won't do a set. He won't do a set unless I film him. If there's no camera in the gym, he literally will not train. Even asking the girls at the front desk to turn the music down so his camera wouldn't pick up the noise. It's loud. It's going to pick it up. It's easy, it's sensitive, it's gonna pick it up. I can't even hear it. I can hear it. I hear it way out there. Yeah, other people need to hear it though. Just a little lower. I don't wanna get- He doesn't care about the other gym members. He's a freak. What's up, Sean? Hey. Haven't seen you in a minute, brother. Everything good? Yeah, that's it. Which is how long? I'm not turning it off. I 
It's not going to turn off. It's just going to be 15 minute video. That's it. Now. Jennifer, I think you should make it louder. No! I can't hear it. I... I'll make it louder. No! I'll pick it up. I want to hear it. I want. I... This is my favorite song. No. No. No! Turn it down a little bit, please. Jason may have been acting a little bratty there, but Andrew seemed to have an endless amount of patience for him. However, when it came to Brad, Brad was very different to Andrew. I can't hear you. You still haven't changed that shirt. What do you say? You haven't changed that shirt since Friday. Oh, this is the same shirt, different shirt. He always wants to talk when, when, you're, when you're not filming. When you're not here and I see him, he's fucking... <laughs> the difference. You don't look at yourself every fucking day. Put on your shirt, man. Do you think that's a fucking funhouse mirror? You look the same. You get all the world if you... Uh... Jesus Christ. <laughs> Man, it's mm -hmm. all the fucking time now, man. These kids, you're fucking delusional, Jason. <laughs> what? Posing isn't lifting. Jason, wait, hold on. What's under those sweatpants? Move, wait, oh no. Move, move the brim of the sweatpants. Oh, for Christ. <laughs> Are you really wearing the PJ Braun trunks? Yeah. He's wearing the pants. That's not even funny. That's you. It's, you have to break like every fucking man law in the book, don't you? I've that's a that's an unwritten rule, man. You don't wear another man's fucking underwear. Jason. Why are you laughing? You're sick. Jason, You're Jason would wear those to a funeral, man. Brad probably knew that the more he argued with Jason, the more chance there was of Jason's fans being unhappy with him. But Brad never seemed to care about upsetting fans anyway. Now, Brad, you you were the object of some scorn in the last video we did because Michael you, Weiss. yeah, what else is new? Uh, you told a joke to me and Saul, and a few people thought you used very poor judgment telling that joke to Saul because his wife is elderly and she is. When does a Jewish man stop masturbating? When the wife dies. We like that. <laughs> She's elderly and she is supposedly sick, but you have some info you want to She's share. She's not sick. If she, was, if she was on her deathbed, I would never have said that. First of all, when she was sick a few months ago, she wasn't sick. She had a pinched nerve in her neck. It wasn't like she was on her deathbed. And Saul laughed anyway. I've told that joke to a bunch of old Jewish guys. They all laughed. You laughed. It was, the, I, I, he didn't well, get offended. When Saul originally told me that his wife was sick, he made it sound very, yeah, like she was, like she was terminal. Yeah, but no, and man, it turns out, fine. it was just a fucking, uh, she's got a problem with her back, like a, a, she had a pinched nerve that's it? in her neck. She had to get shot. Calm down, idiots. I know what to say, when to say it. If I offended any of you, fuck you. All of the previous drama would now seem almost inconsequential, because finally, on the 1st of May 2014, Maniacs would finally get to meet Big Lenny. Finally have an appearance, an appearance by the one and only Big Lenny. Uh, a very surprising appearance this morning, Lenny. I saw you walk in the gym door and I'm like, is that who I think it is? What, what's going on, man? What are you doing here so early? Well, I guess it's everybody's lucky day. We're all together. It's just in time because he just lost his coach yesterday. No, go. I lost my coach. Would you like to elaborate on that? I lost my coach. <laughs> I lost my coach. <laughs> because he's really busy with his business right now. Oh, really? Too busy for you? Okay. Yeah, he's too busy for It's me. on record. Well, we're not, correct? Yeah, we're not. And these 24 inch arms aren't either. Yeah. See that? I'm weighing in about 370. Jason's a ripped 220. Yeah. Minus 40. <laughs> Hey, what do you weigh, a buck 80? A buck 85? And I, I'm kind of disappointed because I didn't have any challengers. But I guess these people out here got half a brain that they don't want a piece of this. <laughs> All you tattooed freaks <laughs> with your gym gear. Where are you? I'm waiting. Remember, no liability. We'll go right out the back, and if you beat me, you get a thousand dollars. I'm sure you guys could use a thousand to think of all the drugs you could buy. <laughs> well, I don't need it. <laughs> don't need drugs when you're like that. <laughs> See that? Where's he, where's he 370 out? and hard. 
Who's he calling? I might as well call out uh, Phil Heath. What's he, what do you weigh, Phil? <laughs> and you get to sleep and eat all day. This may have been the maniac's first meeting with Lenny, but Andrew and Lenny went way back. He just hadn't been able to film him because their schedules never matched up. And even though this was the first meeting of Lenny for the Maniacs, his name had been whispered through the gym like an urban legend for quite some time. Lenny! The Maniacs were taken with him instantly, and Lenny would prove that this was not a fake show and was a real reality show like Andrew had always called it, because what writer could have come up with anything like Big Lenny? When getting to know Lenny for the first time, Lenny mentions to the Maniacs about a man named Andrew Kalura. Andrew Kalura was an original member of the Misfits along with Andrew, Big Lenny, Big Richard and Sol. They all used to work out at the original World Gym that was right across the street from the gym they were in now. Lenny mentions how Andrew Kalura was one of the strongest gym lifters of all time, and he wasn't lying. The clip of Andrew benching 650 pounds raw is extremely impressive. And it's even more impressive when you consider he was only in his early 20s at the time. Andrew perhaps could have broken world records if he had kept on going, but he became a bodybuilder instead, even appearing on the same stage as a young Big Lenny. So will we see Lenny in future videos or was this just a one-off? Will Ian really start to train Jason and be as hands-on as Adam was, or will Jason find someone else who can turn him into a champion? Find out on the next episode of the History of the Delray Misfits. One last quote, Go all you remember. We snack on danger, we dine on death, and dead men don't make money! <laughs>